So what we're seeing is a high density anomaly sitting approximately 85 feet southwest of the garden shaft, about 230 feet yeah. below the surface of the money pit. It's significant. In the latest episode of season 11 of The Curse of Oak Island, the team is drilling deeper to find a tunnel they think is lost. They are still searching around the money pit area. The big question is whether they'll discover the hidden treasure. What have the archaeologists and the digging team found recently? Will they need to try more if they don't find what they're looking for? The episode starts with the Oak Island crew continuing their search. This time, they're getting advice from more people as they go through their tasks. Alex suggests that the tunnel they might find through the drilling could have a lot of metal. Examining what's inside could show if it's pointing specifically west towards the baby blob made out of gold. After making several cuts and going 53 feet down, the drilling tool brings up a mysterious discovery. It's covered in very wet and soft soil from underground. Based on what they already know, this type of soil usually means there's a tunnel nearby. Another team member meets with a representative from Dumas Contracting Limited in the war room. They discuss the latest updates on their ongoing search for the lost treasure. New information from the mining and construction company makes the Oak Island team get back to work after stopping a task. Looks like we'll get her down there. Another foot and a half. The rules for drilling and digging were approved by the Ministry of Labor in Nova Scotia. Now, the team can move on with digging the garden shaft. This sets the stage for the next steps in their research. After getting the go-ahead, they speed up their observation and analysis of specific marked areas before the big operation slows them down. And we're definitely shooting for uh, as soon as possible to get everything uh, submitted to them uh, with respect to the shaft deepening. Okay. Gary Drayton and Peter Fornetti, the metal detector experts on the team, are busy checking the shoreline for clues. This time, they're focusing on Lot 5. Their goal is to find signs of iron, old stuff, metal things, or maybe even hidden treasures. The archaeologists marked potential spots with flags. They also figured out where ships used to be parked. And guess what? They found more signs of activity. People have been curious about the Oak Island treasure since it was first discovered in 1795. Some weird events took place, like people secretly burying treasures, using lead barter tokens, and even placing 2,000-year-old Roman coins and a cross from Smith's Coven. Interestingly, there's a big granite slab right in the middle of Lot 5. It seems like it was put there to cover something up. Close to the park's shoreline, there's a circular hole that goes back to the late 1600s. It looks a bit like a garden shaft. The metal detector experts decided to check the spots marked with flags, and guess what? Their equipment showed that there was metal below the ground. They dug carefully and found a spike that was probably used in building lots of things on the island. Another spot gave them the handle of a snipping tool. It turns out, this tool matches the hand-forged iron scissors from Spain that Dan Blankenship found back in 1970. The archaeologists in the team were busy digging a rectangular hole, thinking it might be connected to the garden shaft. Helen, who's been doing this for a long time, says these kinds of holes are super rare, and it's her first time dealing with one. What's interesting is that the foundation of this hole was buried really deep, almost like someone wanted to hide it on purpose. It seems something important happened in Lot 5, and they're doing their best to find any clues. Jack pitched in to help sift through the dirt they dug up from the hole. While they kept drilling about 100 feet into the money pit area for hours, they came across another big discovery in D5N27, close to the tunnel garden shaft. It looks like there might be another structure going towards the east. The wood in this new tunnel seems stronger and healthier, and it's closer to the surface compared to what they were originally looking for. Uh, we just hit our target depth. We were looking to hit a tunnel, and what we did hit was approximately seven and a half feet of upright. Well, that's pretty cool. Around 101 to 95 feet into drilling, the machine pulled up a bunch of wet soil with scattered materials. This not only confirmed the existence of a second tunnel to the east of the garden shaft, but also hinted at more findings. Sadly, they ran out of time, and now it was up to the Duma contracting and Irving contracting teams to step in with their heavy machinery. These companies brought in some serious tools, like 109-ton cranes for lifting heavy material and a 3-ton hammer grab tool. 
They started putting everything together while Alex and the rest of the team explored a new area to the east of the garden shaft. They're starting a new drilling operation called C5N27 to check out the recently found tunnel. This tunnel is estimated to be seven and a half feet wide and more than 100 feet deep into the ground. The team wants to drill in a different area. The goal of this C5N27 drilling isn't just to explore the tunnel, but also to build a stronger connection from below the garden shaft, as the Oak Island team wants. They had to work fast because there's a time limit, and some parts of the site can't be checked for safety reasons. While the construction folks did the hard work, some team members were excited about checking out the artifacts found at the Interpretive Center on Oak Island. Carmen Legg, an expert in blacksmithing, was called in to look at what seemed like a snipping tool. He confirmed their guess and explained that the broken part was where the scissors handle was attached to the shear. There's a possible connection found on Lot 5. More bits of ceramic and pearlware were discovered, but this time they're colored white and date back to the mid-1700s. Helen thinks some of the creamware might have belonged to a porcelain teapot, matching historical evidence for that time. Uh, possibly creamware. Because it has that slightly yellowish tinge to the glaze. Here's the mystery. Why were these ceramics buried? Before Oak Island was revealed, in 1762, Charles Morris split it into four-acre lots for exploration and digging. This makes it tricky to trace where these ceramics came from. The discovery complicates things even more, but they're eager to solve this puzzle. But it looks like the rectangular hole was there before the island was divided, and definitely before they found the money pit. Now they're drilling a hole to the east, called C5N27. They went pretty deep, down to 93 feet, hoping to find something cool. Sadly, time wasn't on their side, and they had to stop looking before they could explore the whole area. Something strange happened at 104 feet. The soil seemed really delicate and messed up. When they dug down to 111 feet, they found a core filled with wood. The lower part of the wood looked great and its weird pattern suggested that someone made it by hand, not with fancy tools. The cuts on the wood were different from what you'd see with axes or the saws they used a lot in the 1800s. If their idea is right, it means the tunnel was probably made by someone secretly depositing stuff or searching before 1795. The drilling brought up a mix of wet soil, bits of wood, and junk. Terry thinks the smoother and sturdier wood was part of the tunnel's roof, while the lower, darker, and softer fibers were for the floor. Soon, Dumas Contracting Limited will start working around the garden shaft. They'll begin by getting rid of the water and then make the hole 20 feet deeper. There's a lot more exploring to do during drilling and construction. Unfortunately, the episode ends on a bit of a sad note. Time was running out, and they couldn't make more discoveries. The info they got from drilling the C5N27 hole will surely be useful for the mining and construction company as they keep going with the project. I'm gonna put it in, we'll zero it. Lights are on, there you go. Fans of the Curse of Oak Island are in for a treat in a particular episode where Gary Drayton, the metal detecting expert, keeps finding one surprising thing after another. First off, he comes across a vital clue, a signal tucked away in a wall. Following this unexpected lead, they uncover a massive caster wheel buried underground. Gary thinks this wheel might have been used ages ago for some kind of digging on Oak Island, connecting it to the earlier discoveries of digging tools found there. It's a bit mind-boggling to think about people from a thousand years ago having access to such advanced tools for digging, right? As Gary reveals evidence of a hidden tunnel, it raises natural questions. Who were the first people to stash this thing away and who were the ones to come across it later? Did the original hiders do it, or was it the later treasure hunters who made this exciting discovery? With this new twist, the team is gearing up for more investigation on the caster wheel. Gary, along with the rest of the crew, including geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner, archaeologist Dr. Aaron Taylor, and Miriam Amaralt, are on a mission to find stone walkways that might lead to a hidden underground feature near the eastern edge of the marsh. Continuing their search for treasure along the shores of Oak Island, Gary Drayton, his team, and Rick Legina, the leader of the Oak Island crew, make a double discovery. Fantastic, guys. 
should be directly under the center of the search coil. Hidden beneath the rocks and scattered pyrite on the shore, they find two King Charles II Britannia coins from the 17th century. The imprint on one of the coins clearly shows the year 1771, supporting the idea that these coins were hidden away for centuries. It's like finding a real piece of history right there on the shore. Charles II, yeah? <sighs> yep, Charles II. That's way too early for people to be here. That's <laughs> 120 years before the find of the money pit, for sure. People naturally wonder where these 17th century coins came from. Could it be that someone, in a hurry to find hidden riches, accidentally dropped these valuable coins? As these interesting discoveries keep coming, the mysteries around Oak Island get even deeper, offering a peek into the island's mysterious past. Let's look at another possibility that might help solve this mystery. Is it likely that a rich group purposely hid these precious items, trying to keep their treasures safe on Oak Island? This question opens up many possibilities and definitely deserves more investigation by the Oak Island team. While Gary Drayton was out searching for treasures with his metal detector, he got super lucky and found not just one, but two amazing things. Oh, 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 look at that! Woohoo! That's bloody brilliant! His first find was near the shore of Oak Island, where he discovered a button that used to be on the uniform of a military officer from the 17th century. We're still not sure which military group it belonged to. There's a strong guess that this military group might have had a hand in hiding the mysterious secrets of the island. On the same day, Drayton and his team went into a nearby forest and found a small coin in the ground. They thought it might be another Maravedi from the 17th century, similar to the one they found at the end of the previous season. This coin looked smaller, possibly equal to two Maravedis instead of the eight from the last find. These seemingly small discoveries could lead to a much bigger hidden treasure somewhere on Oak Island. 